Hello and welcome to today's video. Today I want to present you an opening trap in the Black Madima Gambit. The trap is known as the Halusar trap, named after Hermann Halusar, who lost the game against Emil Josef Dima himself at Baden-Baden in 1934. You can see the critical position already on the board. It's right to move and win right at the spot. But take your time before we just jump right into the tactic. I of course want to show you how to reach the position and what Black should have done to avoid to get trapped. So without further ado, it's time to checkmate. So the game started with the moves d4, d5 and here white played the move e4. This is known as the starting position of the black Madima gambit and white wants to give up some pawns for rapid development and open lines for the pieces. Black just simply took the pawn on e4 and there's absolutely nothing wrong with the move and white played the move knight to c3 attacking the pawn on e4 so black has to do something about it. The most logical move in this position for black is knight to f6 and here white plays the move f3. He's willing to give up the pawn once and for all and hopes that with opening um, the f-file he may could later um, start an attack against um, Black's king side by bringing a rook to f1 or probably the queen to f3. So yeah, this is what um, White has in mind. And Black um, accepted the gambit and took the pawn in f3. And in this position White's main move is knight to f3. And here Black has several options. For example, in, tour in tournament games we've seen the moves um, bishop to f5, bishop to g4, g6, e6, and also c6. And all these are good possibilities for Black. And if you want to know more about this variation, I would advise you to check out the series. This is not for today's lesson, because in today's lesson I will show you the move queen takes f3, also known as the rider gambit. This is only a rare guest in tournament game because it got a reputation of being a little bit unsound. But of course, um, black must be precise, otherwise he easily can get lost in one or another trap, right? So in this position, if you think about it, white's offering black to take another pawn. And to be honest, um, taking the pawn is actually the best move by black, and so black does. And by taking the pawn, um, white got the option of playing bishop to e3, gaining another tempo and developing a piece. So. Um, I think White's play is somewhat logic, but of course, right in the moment he's down to pawns, so um, if Black can defend, well, then Black most likely will uh, go on and win the game. In the game, Black played the move Queen to b4. And there's nothing wrong with this move, but if I would be Black, I would play the move Queen to g4 in this position. Because if you start thinking about the position, then it's pretty clear what White's plan is. White really wants to crush you. Um, he's already down two pieces. The only way um, he can win this game is by doing it fast. He will bring his pieces into the game and then he will start trying to crush you. And the most important piece for an attack is the queen. So if you would be able to exchange the queen, well, I don't see how white um, should be able to really gain a king's crushing attack, you know. Um, I think that this position is just clearly one for black. You're up to, you're up to pawns and without uh, the white queen on the board, um, it's just a simple game for black, I think. So white really cannot take the queen, but instead has to play the move um, queen to f2. And here you just simply can play the move e5 opening up the line for the dark squared bishop. And yeah, I think that this position is absolutely fine for black. Of course, um, white may get some compensation for the two pawns, but I don't think that it is enough. And if you want to know more about this position, I would advise you to check out the game Kirev vs. Kund played in 2006. Well, let's go back to the game. In the game, black played the move queen to b4. And here, White just simply castle queenside, bringing the rook to the center and setting a trap. 
and yeah, black four for the trap. Black played the move. Bishop to g4. It looks tempting because if you think about it, well, then you're pinning the queen, and if the queen moves away, well, then you're winning at least the exchange, right? But uh, it turns out that this is actually a big blunder. So what um, what Black really should have done in this position is to move c6 to stop any bishop before uh, bishop b5, knight b5, or knight e5 threats. Yeah, so if you would ever reach this position, just play c6, or as I already showed you earlier, play the move um, queen to g4 instead of queen to b4. Anyway, in this position, like play the move bishop to g4, and I would advise you to pause the video and try to figure out why uh, this move was so bad by black and what white should do in this position to win the game right at the spot. I'll give you three seconds to pause the video. One, two, three. Well, I hope you all found the solution. If not, I'll give you a little hint. Our rook uh, on the d-file takes away the squares d8 and d7 of black's king. Black's king can also not go to c8, f7 or e7 because um, he's blocked by his own pieces. So if we would manage to gain a check on black's king, this probably could be a mate. So yeah, with this hint in mind, I'll give you another three seconds to pause the video if you need to. One, two, three. Well, I hope you all found the solution. The right move is knight to b5 exclam, threatening to mate black with the move knight to c7. So yeah, um, black really cannot take our queen on f3 because it's mate. So he has to do something about it and the best move and probably the only move is knight to a6. And here, well, white can just simply grab the pawn on b7, attacking the rook and the knight at the same time. So in the game, black played the move rook to c8. But after queen takes a6, well, black could resign and so he did because he cannot recapture the rook on d1 because then it's just simply made on c8. And if he cannot capture the rook on d1, well, what can he do? He's already down a piece. So yeah, this is just a clearly winning position for white. Um, I have to mention that in this position, black got a better move and this would be the move queen to e4. Oops, sorry, queen to e4. Because if you think about it, then with this move, black is guarding the rook on a8. And at the same time, he's threatening to take the bishop on e3. And on top of that, the bishop on g4 is also threatening to take the rook on d1. So this is the most logical move, uh, in my opinion. And here, I would advise you to grab the um, knight on a6. And now we have to cover um, two moves. We should think about um, queen takes e3 or bishop takes d1. Let's start with queen takes e3 check. Well, we just simply go um, to b1 with our king, and right now we're threatening mate on c7, so black has to do something about it, otherwise uh, he gets mated. And the best move is queen to c5. But here we just simply go in again with our queen to b7, attacking the rook on a1, uh, on a8, and threatening knight takes c7, so yeah, what can black do in this position? Well, he actually has to take our rook on d1. But then we just simply can grab the rook on a8 and after king e7 and knight to c3. We reach a position where, believe it or not, black's best move is giving up the knight, uh, the bishop and playing the move e6. But um, let me show you what would have happened after the move bishop to g4 because it's much more logical if you think about it to try to protect the piece because, uh, I mean, come on, a move like e6, um, well, then you just simply grab the bishop and you have a piece. So, I mean, it's clear that white is winning in this position. So it's much more logic to um, play a move bishop to g4. And yeah, here you just simply got to move bishop to b5 check. And after c6, queen b7 check, well, it doesn't matter where the king goes. Um, white is just clearly better. Let's say king to e8. Well, then we just simply grab the pawn on c6. And after uh, king to d8, we easily can stop our analyze at this point because after move, the next moves, um, knight to f3 and rook to d8 one, ah, well, uh, black's king is in grave danger. Computer gives it already as plus 12 for white. So this is pretty, pretty brutal for black. Um, and if he goes to e6 with the king, well, again, we just simply grab the pawn on c6 with the bishop. And 
I mean, look at this king. He's stuck in the middle of the board and yeah, it's right. We're not up in material right at the moment, but our next moves will probably be, be uh, knight to f3, rook to e1. And I don't see how the black king can survive our attack. I mean, the computer thinks the same. He already gives it us plus six for white. And if you're not sure about this position, I would advise you to check out Malicia's study. I did a study with the game. Um, I will put the link down below in the video description. So just go there and check it out. It's free. You can just play it through the moves by yourself or you just simply can turn on the engine and then play it out for yourself. I mean, you could try to um, protect the king and let white just simply mate you, <laughs> right? Um, anyway, I mean, this position is one for white. So what else could um, black do? Well, in this position, I told you earlier that black could also take the rook on d1. And in this position, you should recapture the bishop. And, well, probably the only move that makes any sense is rook to uh, d8, because we're already threatening um, check on c7. And after the check, the best move for white is bishop to d2. And believe it or not, but in this position, black's best move is rook takes d2. Um, I will show you the other uh, lines uh, soon enough, but let's just finish this line, because after king takes d2, Queen f4, you have to find one more precise move, and this is king e2. It may look tempting to go to e1 because you don't want to block your own bishop, right? But um, if you play king e1, this is actually a big blunder because now um, black can reach a forced draw by perpetual check that starts with queen to c1, king f2, knight e4, king f3. Knight g5, king e2, and queen takes c2 check, and king e1, and queen c1, and white cannot escape. Um, black will always find a way to check the white's king, so if you're not sure about this position and you uh, think that uh, white could escape, well, I would advise you again to just simply go to the leeches study and play through the moves by yourself. Um, I'm pretty sure you won't find a way to um, get out of the perpetual check. Let's go back um, one more um, time to this position because I wanted to show the king e2 line. Of course, right now you block your bishop on f1, but after let's say e6 and knight to f3, well, it's pretty clear that um, you are winning. I mean, you're up a piece. And of course, your king doesn't look that good on e2, but um, black's king on um, e8 doesn't make a good job as well. So I think this is fine. And yeah you most likely will go on to win the game. So you may think, well, okay, but what is with another move in this position? And well, I would advise you to try to find another move because it's not that easy. Um, right at the moment, white is threatening to take the pawn on uh, c7. So let's say black wants to do something about it and place the move queen to e5. Well, this would just simply um, speed up our development and our attack against black's king because we now can play knight to f3 with tempo and the queen has to move again to c5 and here we just simply co could go in again with queen to b7 threatening knight takes c7 check so a logical move would be knight to d5 protecting the pawn and in this position i would advise you again to pause the video because in this position, right, got a pretty stunning shot that just simply wins the game. And uh, I was pretty amazed as I saw the move the first time. So yeah, I would advise you to pause the video and try to figure out what white's best move is in this position. I'll give you two seconds to do so. One, two, three. Well, I hope you all found the solution. If not, I'll give you a little hint. Think about black's king position. If our knight wouldn't be on the board, then a check on b5 would probably be pretty strong, right? So, with this in mind, try to find a solution again if you didn't already solve the puzzle. I give you three seconds to pause the video if you need to. One, two, three. Well, I hope you all found the solution. The right move is knight to d6, check, exclaim, exclaim. What a move! I mean, come on. How can you not like such a move? I mean, if it works, right? And yeah, of course it works. Let's say, I mean, what can black do? C takes d6? Well, then we're just simply playing bishop b5 check. Um, black cannot play the rook to d7 because of the mate. 
So he has to grab the bishop with the queen. And after queen takes queen, rook d7 and queen takes d5. Well, come on, I mean, you have a queen and a knight for a rook. This is just clearly winning. No need to argue. And, yeah, well, what else could he play? Well, let's say he takes it with the e-pawn. Well, no problem for us. We just simply play bishop e5 check, king e7, rook e1 check, king f6, bishop g5 check, um, king g6, bishop d3 check, f5 and now i would just simply advise you to take the work on d8 and if you count pieces well then you will figure out that you have a piece and black's king is still in grave danger and i mean the computer gives it already as plus 16 plus 16 i come I come on um yeah this position is just clearly winning for you anyway um, what else could black play? Well, his best try is probably to take it with the rook, but even here we just simply play bishop to b5 check. And again, um, black cannot play a move like rook d7 because of the mate. And he also cannot play c6 because after queen c8, rook d8, bishop takes c6, queen takes c6, queen takes c6, rook d7, knight e5, threatening mate again, knight, b, uh, knight b6, knight takes rook, knight takes rook, and queen c8 mate. Ah, game over, come on. So the best move for black in this position is actually to simply just take the bishop with the queen, but I mean, after queen takes b5, ah, come on. You got a queen, he got a rook. This position is one for you. So yeah, I hope you liked today's video. I hope you learned something. Um, I know that I probably showed um, a lot of lines today, but I think... Um, if I didn't, well, then there are some people would say, well, why didn't you show this line? I'm not sure how to win the position. And yeah, so I just wanted to include as much as I could in this um, uh, line. I really hope you liked today's video. If you did, please uh, let me know in the comments. And yeah, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. So see you next time. And it's again time to checkmate.